Ladies, gentlemen, welcome back. I am so excited that you all are here. We are here back once again for just one question. I'm your host, Lion Flood. Thank you all for joining. And as usual, do me a small favor. If you get a chance and opportunity, make sure you hit that like, that subscribe button down there. I want everyone to understand what's going on and spread the word so we can talk about it. Okay. Uh, now, straight to business. As I don't do too much talking in the very beginning, I interject doing the videos. We're going to watch a video today that's very interesting. But first, I like to state what the page is not, as I usually do. Um, this page, again, is not against cop bashing, law enforcement bashing, discrediting them, discarding them, anything of that nature. I am bringing light to situations where officers lie on official document, documents in court. They plant evidence. But my real thing is what happens to them afterwards, right? Who is policing the police? When you and I lie at work or rely on an official paperwork or something the government says you lied, we're taking our money back. You are getting your taxes. Some repercussion happens to us. Most officers, they get death duty or something, but their lies affect the majority of the public way more. People have to hire attorneys, pay court costs, pay fees, lose their job. Sometimes they lose their children. That's one of the issues that I am um, talking about today. Now, in this court um, thing that you're about to see, this happened some years ago, but again, it's just the context of what we're talking about. Long story short, as you'll see in the video, um, even this gentleman's attorney will state that he didn't believe him at first, that officers would not do this, right? Uh, so the cops pulled him over. They went through a few things. You'll see his hands up. They punch him. Beyond all of that, okay, I'm talking about their report. They stated something totally different that their body cams did not back up. And if it wasn't for the camera, you have to ask what would have happened to this gentleman, right? Uh, but even more importantly than that, one of the officers you will hear in the court stands up and asks the judge for leniency because he hasn't been able to see his kid, his child. He, he doesn't know what's going to happen if his wife loses his home because he was the breadwinner. But none of that is what he thought about when he was doing what he did and lying on an official police report and in court to the jury um, about this gentleman. So without any further ado, this is Marcus Jeter coming. I think it's out of New Jersey. So let's jump right into it. That dash cam video helped provide a Bloomfield, New Jersey, New Jersey man's innocence. It's a story we first broke at 7 Online. And this 30-year-old faced a number of charges, including eluding police and insult. Investigative reporter Sarah Wallace obtained the dash cam tapes, and she spoke exclusively with him. Sarah? Well, Diana and Sade, quite a turnabout. All of the criminal charges against Marcus Jeter have been dismissed. Two Bloomfield cops have now been indicted. A third quietly pleaded guilty to tampering and retired. It's all because of video the cops may have tried to hide. Get out the car! Get out! This is the Bloomfield Police Department's dash cam video that prosecutors say they never saw when they pursued criminal charges against 30-year-old Marcus Jeter. Notice his hands in the air. He was charged with eluding police, resisting arrest and assault, and also notice who throws repeated punches. If the tape hadn't surfaced... I was going to be doing jail. The incident began when cops were called to the Bloomfield home Jeter shares with his girlfriend. No charges were filed, and Jeter says he left after briefly talking to officers. They say you were eluding them. When they were behind me with the lights on, I pulled right over, you know. So you weren't trying to escape? No, I wasn't trying to escape. In a video from the first police car prosecutors did see, Jeter stops on the side of the Garden State Parkway. The cops pull out guns. Why didn't you just get out of the car? Because I was... I was afraid. There was a cop on my left with a gun pointed at me, and there was one on my right side with a shotgun pointed. I'm afraid that I might get shot. If you got out. Mm -hmm. The tape not initially turned over is on the dash of a second police car that comes from the opposite direction, crosses the median into ongoing traffic, and then strikes Jeter's car. There is no mention of that in any police report. When Jeter first told his attorney that part of the story. It was incredible. I didn't believe his story at that particular point in time. So you finally believed him then? Yes. The next thing I know, as he's coming around the car, the glass gets busted, and all the glass goes in my face. Get out the car! Get out the car! 
Your hands are up. My hands are up. As soon as he opened the door, one of the officers reached in and just punched me in my face. As he's trying to take the seatbelt off, he's elbowing me in my jaw. And I'm, you know, and I'm like, ah, and he's like, stop trying to take my gun. Stop resisting the red. Now, I want to jump in really quick here because this is an important fact. This is a technique that officers are taught. If you can verbalize and state that the person is doing something, then it gives you a little bit more leeway to escalate uh, your takedown, whatever you're doing. So they say, stop resisting. Stop resisting. That's the first thing you normally hear, right? And the person's just laying there, um, or they're getting punched and they're moving. So what do you expect a person to do if they're getting hit with a billy club or an asp or something? Then initially, your first is covering the move, or getting hit. Stop resisting. If you notice this officer, and this is one of the things that prosecutors notice. So the, his, Mr. Jeter's hands are up, but the officer is yelling, stop, why are you trying to get my gun? That gives him way more leeway for the courts to say he was going for my gun so i had to elbow him i had to punch him in the throat for example but his hands are clearly up you will hear that in one more second right now when they get him to the ground he's going to state again why are you reaching for my gun stop trying to take my gun and as he's saying that i just knew and i and i was thinking back in my mind like okay this is going to go wrong Get down! Stop resisting! Stop resisting! Why are you trying to take my gun? Get off my gun! And right before they, um, when they opened the door about to put me in, the officer hits me in the back of the head again. As soon as prosecutors saw this video, they dismissed all of the charges against Jeter. Interesting to note, an investigation by Bloomfield PD's scandal-plagued Internal Affairs Division had found no wrongdoing by police officers. The blame is with the Bloomfield Police Department not providing that tape. If we hadn't had the tapes in this particular case, an innocent man would be in jail today. I'm sure that if this happened to me, it could happen to a bunch of other people, you know? Scary, right? It's a scary situation. And we were there exclusively today in Essex County Court in Newark, where Bloomfield police officers Sean Corder, there on the left, and Orlando Trinidad, who you will see here on the right, were arraigned on charges including conspiracy, official misconduct, and falsifying reports. Trinidad is also charged with aggravated assault. They pleaded not guilty. By the way, you can watch much more of my extended interview with Marcus Jeter on our website, 7 Online. That dash cam video helped provide a Bloomfield, New Jersey. Okay, so we're back now, and just to go ahead and wrap this up, you can see why I said it's so important now that they have cameras, now body cameras, because there have been several people incarcerated because of police misconduct, police cover-up, planting evidence. I'm not saying all of them, but I'm just saying that it's true. So what happens when someone comes out and says, hey, I had drug plan on me? Most people don't believe them. But as these stories start to come out, they see that it is absolutely possible. We don't automatically need to take the word of an officer that this happened. Just like in court, they say he's innocent to proven guilty, right? So why isn't it that we think we can't believe that an officer's word of what happened is not absolutely right without seeing proof? So once again, thank you all for joining in to this week's uh, hustle. Just uh, one question, your host, Lion Flood. Please, again, make sure you take the time to share, subscribe to this video as more comes out and we can get the word out. And we can talk about some ways to adjust things and, and become positive with it, all right? So thank you, guys. And remember, just because you are being hustled does not mean it's a bad thing.